Hello there and welcome to another video from uh, me, I'm Matty, um, from the Station News Dev team and I thought I'd put together a little quick video today to show you how to use the new Sterling engine in kind of the most uh, simplest way you can. Um, for this demonstration we're going to be on Europa because it's got a nice cold exterior atmosphere which means it's really easy to cool the Sterling engine down. So, I've made a little base here, let's go inside and see what it looks like. Got one Sterling engine set up already, but let's make another one. So you need the kit. Then you're going to need some steel sheets. And some electronic parts. Here we go. Very nice. So, now there's a bit to a uh, bit to familiarise yourself with, but think of it a little bit like a heat exchanger. Mm, just have a wee drink. Now where were we? Think of it a bit like a heat exchanger, um, but it's also doing a bit of work in the middle so we're making power off the difference between the something that is hot and something that is cold um, and you can go and look on Wikipedia and see how Sterling engines work in real life we've done a bit of an approximation of it here um, but if we put a working gas inside and I've got one over here I haven't filled it up all the way it's um, probably at about 40 moles I think let's go ahead and pop that in there Turn it on. We'll see, we've got a readout here for the, the hot side of the um, heat exchanger, and then the cold side. So the hot side's kind of in here, cold side's over here, and then they kind of mix together in the middle. And the cold side's getting cooled down by this big fan over here, and the hot side is getting heated up by the input pipe here. So hot gas is coming in here, going through the hot side heat exchanger and then it's coming out here and it's going to be a bit colder as it comes out. Um, so that's what's going to be heating up our hot side. There's a couple of different things here you can optimise. We've got the environment operating efficiency which is kind of the room that we're in. So the turning engine likes to be in a room that's about room temperature and the further you deviate from that the uh, less efficient it's going to be. It also likes to have you also want to have a decent differential in temperature and pressure, which are basically the same thing by the ideal gas law in this regard, uh, between the hot side and the cold side. So if you keep this side nice and hot and this side nice and cold, the pressure is going to be significantly different between those two sides and that's what's driving those pistons. Um, so ideally uh, keeping a difference in temperature of about 200 Kelvin is generally enough to get that all the way up. So I've got two here in series. So we've got a hot input pipe that comes in here, heats up the hot side and then it's going to pop out air that's a decent amount colder out here but still quite hot and it's going to go into this one and this one's going to pop the air out here. But where are we getting our hot air from? A furnace. But that, but before we cover that, this is the cold. This is the output pipe of the second Sterling engine, and I've got here a back pressure regulator that's um, saying, "Hey, once you get over a one megapascal, start pumping the air out." Ideally, we want to keep the um, the hot side as hot as possible. So if we're keeping uh, too much air, um, too much warmish, coldish air in here, that's going to limit the amount of heat we can kind of push through that heat exchanger. So what's going to happen, heat comes in here, it's moving through the engine, some of it gets turned into power based on these efficiencies and then the heat's going to come out here into this room. So the other thing is we've got to keep this room cool, so I've got this big uh, passive radiator set up here. So we've got some radiators in here and if, I, if it's getting too cold I can turn it off, otherwise I leave it on. It goes to the outside here and that's um, mixing uh, keeping that pipe cool which is kind of keeping the room cool or I can just open the door 
those are kind of my two options. So we've got our furnace over here, this is how we're going to make our hot gas. I'm using a bit of a classic station use exploit here. If we build a frame around a furnace, um, it's perfectly insulated and it doesn't lose heat. So you notice I'm using insulated pipes through all the connections here, that's because I don't want any heat getting out of my network before it's had the chance to go through a Stirling engine and get some of it into power. And I've got my output power here going into a couple of batteries over here which we're going to charge up. Um, so let's... Oh yeah, I've got a chute connecting to the input of my furnace here so I can put stuff in. So we'll put that frame back. We've got some fuel in here to burn. We're not going to need a huge amount. Um, let's open this up. And you generally want, what is that, 2 to 1 ratio of volatiles to oxide. So let's pop 8 volatiles in. And 4 oxide. high pressure there, almost 2000 degrees Kelvin, but we're missing a working gas in our Stirling engine. So what needs to happen next is uh, we're going to need to put some gas in one of our, and we're in a tank here to go inside the engine. So when the engine's heating up, what you're heating up is this working gas and there's the expansion and then the compression of that gas that's causing the pistons to move. Um, now you don't want to put too much in, the Stirling engine is fairly uh, sensitive to internal pressure if it gets over 10, um, 10 megapascals it goes boom. So I've got a little setup here and I've got a pressure regulator set to 2 kilopascals. So let's let that fill up. Tablet. I don't know how oxygen got in there but I think it should be okay with that level, I don't think that'll explode. If it does, that'll be bad luck. Alrighty. So we can pop our gas canister in here. If you notice here it says the working gas efficiency of 15%. Different types of gases have different efficiencies, but generally the lighter the gas, the more efficient it's going to be at driving those turbines. Um, and now I think we can go ahead and turn it on. Uh, one thing to watch out for, um, when you put this in, so when you turn it on it's going to move the gas from the tank into the Stirling engine, and when you turn it off, it puts the gas back in the tank. If you have it on and you move the tank, the gas is going to vent into the atmosphere, so watch out for that. And let's watch it go. It's hussing along. Hopefully we're not, we didn't put too much gas in that gas tank. If that pressure gets over about 8 or 9 kilopascals, so it seems to so steady to get. So you see our hot side is sitting at about 1000 and our cold side is actually cooling down as the room in here cools it down. And the Stirling engine is heating up the room a little bit so our environment operating efficiency is going right up as well. This pipe is only 700 Celsius, what's this one, a thousand. So we're taking about 300 degrees Celsius out of it as we're passing through here and we're taking out another sort of 300 through here. But look at that, we're generating 12, 13 kilowatts. And that is the Stirling engine. Um, yeah. It's getting, what's the temperature getting up to? Minus 50? Yeah, I'm not sure if this like passive cooling is the best solution because radiators are actually quite expensive. Um, so on my next, probably a more efficient solution might just be to pump a certain amount of the exterior atmosphere from outside and through here, seeing as it's oxygen anyway, and just have like a kind of like in a server farm, right? Just have air running through. I might try that on my Vulcan one. So up next I might show you a more complex setup on Vulcan using um, just the
just the exterior atmosphere, but we'll save that for another video. Until now, we need to go and find a use for all this power. See you later.